Hey everybody, Chris Pugh here. I uh, just got, thought I'd try a little something different with some of the video content. So typically speaking, I'm usually behind a camera, just holding something and actually uh, just filming my console and I'm standing behind it. So this is the first time I'm actually trying to sort of get on the other end of the camera and really try to uh, talk through some of this stuff. Just some things I've been thinking about, maybe uh, sharing as far as uh, just some of the information and uh, things of that nature. So I know one of the things that I kind of brought up uh, in one of my uh, uh, live sound engineering Facebook pages was that I wanted to make some more content. And this is really, and I thought about specifically wanted to talk about some of the fundamentals of things. And uh, you know, I was kind of thinking through what fundamentals to talk about. There's a lot of information out there for some, from some really, really great uh, sources and such, as far as um, things like mic placement, gain staging, gain structure, all of these fundamental elements, um, you know, source, uh, getting your source right, all that stuff. There's lots of really, really great information out there. And um, there's, there's lots of information out there on the topic that I chose too, but really just sort of wanted to look at the, um, look at something in terms of specifically digital console ecosystems and what we look at uh, to that regard. So uh, the thing that I was going to uh, try to go over here is uh, basically um, uh, digital, um, digital console word clock and uh, really sort of what that is and why it's important and why it's something that, you know, while it's, uh, it's basically, it's a part of every digital console ecosystem out there and uh, understanding it can really help us better, uh, better decide how we're going to make decisions as far as um, things we're going to implement or not, and just the best methods and how to do that. So I actually made a little bit of a presentation here to kind of go over some of the basic fundamentals. I'm not going to get into every single setup that I've done uh, at this stage in it, just because uh, some of the things do get rather complex. And it's, uh, I wanted to just kind of go over the baseline fundamentals, but kind of thinking along the lines of if you apply this whole, uh, this mentality and this process of these fundamentals to everything, then, uh, you know, no matter what situation you run into, you should end up being in a, in a good spot to be able to really uh, deploy things correctly and properly and have good confidence that things are correct in this domain. Because this is one of these, this is one of the areas where if you accidentally or potentially misstep in something it can cause problems down down the line and it can be depending on where that misstep is it can be a little difficult or um time consuming to really kind of trace that down so uh i'm just going to go ahead and get some information here up on the screen hopefully i can do this correctly i'm just kind of feeling my way through how this process works so do this all right perfect and here we go. So we should be able to, uh, you should be able to see basically just a presentation screen. Um, digital audio fundamentals, word clocks, and their crucial role with intentionality. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. <clears throat> so I guess to begin, uh, I mean, let's just go ahead and, and get right into the obvious. What is a word clock? So by definition, you want to look that up in dictionary, Wikipedia, whatever, uh, clock signal used to synchronize digital devices. Um, clocks and, um, and synchronizes samples of information, which is what we're dealing with uh, in terms of the actual, um, uh, the digital information that exists within our, uh, within our, within our digital console ecosystems. And uh, just to clarify, it's not to be confused with time code, which is, which in that case, it is metadata about media being transferred. So just to, just to clarify, word clock and time code are not the same thing. And uh, without getting into too deep of a dive on that, um, you know, we'll kind of leave that there for the, for the time being, that basically we have word clock signal uh, and what that does versus time code, which is uh, kind of going down another direction. So uh, let's look at another common question, which actually gets asked a lot, which is, do I need an external clock for my live digital audio console systems? 
And so from looking at the overall fundamental here, um, my thought on this is most times the answer is no. So with that, you know, just going in, so knowing the definition of what a word clock is, we understand the fundamental that keeping this process integral to the primary converter will yield the most accurate result given the word clock components are functioning properly. So that should be a given. Uh, but um, but that's basically we are going off of the assumption that things are in fact uh, operating correctly. So uh, one of the next things to kind of uh, dive down here is uh, if I don't need an external word clock, why does it seem like my external clock improves the sound of my system, um, which is uh, we started uh, uh, just to kind of bring up an example here, we would definitely look at uh, things back in the early or the 2010 era or slightly prior to where there was the uh, there was a big, big push to put uh, certain uh, manufacturers consoles on the Apogee Big Ben at the time. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, we, uh, we look, uh, uh, this is where things can get a little subjective in terms of what does what does that external or other product actually do to um uh, is it more accurate is it more proper uh, you know th this is where it kind of gets into somewhat of subjective information here so um but the reality is, um, just you know, basically reading from the page here, we must accept that while components are designed to often do the same job, it does not directly translate that all things are equal. But we must also accept that if we use an external, an external device as the primary generator of clock source for a converter, we now have an outside factor that could potentially allow the converter or system to not perform as intended. So. I realize with that, I'm basically leaving a big, big gray area there with that, but that's just how, that's basically how I see these things operate. Um, you know, in, uh, if all things are functioning correctly using an, in, yeah, an internal uh, synchronization device does um, seem to be from a mathematical perspective, uh, that should be the most, um, the most proper and accurate um generation of that clock signal being that it should have been designed by by the by the manu manufacturer to operate within the scope of all the things that it should be doing within that digital device so kind of a lot of jumble of words there but i'm just going to kind of leave it there so i don't we don't get back and forth on a lot of subjectivity on that i'm just going to try to stick to stick to the math if we can on this one so um, let's go into a couple of, uh, let's just look at a few different type of um, uh, scenarios that kind of uh, come up pretty often. So let's say, what about a single console system with no external processing? So good, uh, good examples of this are just to, to name a couple, you know, we're talking about, you know, let's, let's, let's say like, um, like an Avid SC48 or uh, Midas X32, Behringer, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Midas M32, Behringer X32, something of that uh, sort. So, you know, to clarify here, uh, in most cases, uh, such systems are easily and properly synchronized via a local sync to the desk. Thus, does not require complex clock distribution. If you drive a PA or other sources, uh, zone sources or anything like that with analog outputs, this is typically all the thought or effort required to ensure that you're accurately set. This is also a default configuration for most of these type of consoles. That's just right out of the box. You don't have to change anything. So, um, so let's take a look at another question, um, which is if it really is that simple, when do I have to put some brain power to this? So here's some good examples here. You have multiple consoles that are sharing a set of, uh, sharing a stage box, or sh uh, sharing a set of um, analog to digital converters. Um, 
another example, a system comprised of external DSP like Waves, SoundGrid, Universal Audio, or other external processing elements that are other digital systems that all have to play nice here. And then uh, just another example here, these aren't all the scenarios, I'm just listing a, a few here, digital, digital PA uh, drive system processors where you're using, like for instance, uh, let's say you're using lake processing or something along those lines, uh, or maybe uh, one of the direct out prodigy lines, uh, anything where you have um, digital audio signal being sent to this, uh, it's just something you do have to sort of think about with the continuity of the clock signal being distributed. So <clears throat> uh, let's look at a couple, like going back to, to the example thing for just a moment, let's look at a couple of real world examples here. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm actually just gonna bring up a couple of stock photos of those, uh, some of those, uh, some of those other consoles that are, uh, that are primarily gonna have local inputs, outputs and things like that. So here again, Pretty simple um, configuration here. We're looking at, you know, these consoles um, are uh, all happen to have a, a reasonable amount. Um, and when by reason, reasonable amount, I mean like to the point where you could do a, you could do a, um, you know, a mixing music input show on something like this. We're looking at just to kind of, you know, name them off. The top one is the back of a Digico S31. We've got a Midas M32 there in the middle and then an Avid SC48. All these have local inputs and outputs. So single console, local inputs and outputs, no external DSP and ergo. So there's really only a single digital device here in play. So the local device is going to be um, the, most, uh, the most accurate way to, to do this. Um, so let's look, take it one step further and uh, just take a look at another really, really common application. So uh, there's no, um, I was just gonna kind of talk through this one a little bit, uh, you know, single digital console. So that's a picture of an SD9 with an SD rack uh, that's connected via, um, via MADI cabling. So with this one, uh, we're really looking more at, um, you know, uh, again, I didn't put any, uh, bullet points here just kind of wanted to basically share what I normally do in this scenario I will typically even though technically you could go one of two ways you could you could have like with just these two things connected you could you could have the main converter be the um being the stage box uh, provide the master clock source however most of the time I still have the uh the console serve as the master clock and that really comes more into play as you uh as you start to incorporate other elements into your overall uh, into your clock distribution network and so even in in this same scenario my personal preference while like if you're going to leave it as this technically you could go either way my preference is however to have console generate the master clock and then distribute that down the line and then uh, you can you can have those selections at both locations. Either um, you can tell, uh, like um, I actually have this pretty much this exact configuration that's part of my own rig. So I basically tell the console to provide its master clock internally, and then I tell the SD rack through a series of settings that hey, I want you to see clock over the MADI line. So that's kind of how I do that. And that's why I sort of chose these stock photos here of these particular devices, um, just because that's that's how I am configured. So I want to take a look at just very, um, to kind of wrap this up pretty quick, uh, one other element here, which is uh, utilizing a, uh, some external DSP. So single con so we're we're still using single console here, but with um um let's let's see uh, digital stage box and external processing. So uh, wave sound grid is the example here. So in this case, um, because tech, usually speaking, our um, our our control port or our control for the external processing is going to be is going to live directly by the actual mixing desk console. So uh, this kind of goes back into what I was saying a little bit on the previous slide, which is which talks about 
Um, and it's basically a good reason to say, okay, well, I want my, you know, master source generated right there. Um, so master sync is still, uh, the, uh, the actual primary mixing console in this case. Um, DSP card sync is derived from the, um, from the console, um, waves, sound grid, sync master, sync master is the DSP card. So we can see that that is indicated here in this simple example. So what we're looking at here, this is actually looks like an X32, uh, like a Behringer or Midas, um, waves card option. And then looks like someone's got their, uh, got their machine and then a server here. Um, what I really, uh, I, I wanted to point something out in this particular photograph because I'm actually, I, I intentionally grabbed this one, uh, one, because it was readily available and two, because it actually has an error in it that I, I really wanted to point out, which goes along with this last bullet point here, which is to mind settings on your console card sync location. So let's just take a look at something real quick. Going back to this DSP card sync derived from console sync, which what's what we're what we mean by that is that the console that is generating the master clock source needs to be able to pass that along to any other digital devices that are connected to it. In this case, being our um, external DSP card I/O. So in order for this card to be able to properly see that, um, there is a setting that is that done. In this case, looks like uh, the image here is actually just a screen grab from a super rack, a wave super rack session. So the reality is, is that what that should actually look like, this should not say INT right here. For this to be a properly configured system, that should say DIG or set for digital, which means it is actually, while it is the master of the sound grid ecosystem, it is actually seeing its source from the console. So the overall thought and thread here is that we still are looking at a single point from which the, from which the master clock source is derived and ultimately distributed down the line through methods. So for starters, that's, I think that's about all I'm going to get into as far as word clock um, basics, fundamentals, and how to distribute uh, with simple and then slightly more complex ecosystems. So hope this makes sense. Uh, I'll look and try to do some other information on a few, on a few others that are, um, maybe a little bit, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look and try to do some information on a few other setups that are slightly more involved if there's an interest out for that. So thanks, uh, thanks for watching and uh, taking my little experiment of going a little differently here and uh, hope everybody is doing well. Cheers, everybody.